Here we are at yet another cemetery, the Burn Historic Cemetery. So yeah, I accidentally deleted the uh, intro to this video. I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, I messed up. But anyway, I just want to quick let you know where I am in, in this video. This is the Burn Reformed uh, United Church of Christ here in my home county of Berks County, Pennsylvania. This is near Blue Marsh Lake, and I'm just continuing my uh, theme for today. I, I had just vis visited another old uh, graveyard, and I thought I'd continue that today. Oh, it's kind of a gray, gloomy day that day. Actually, it starts pouring at the end of this video. But anyway, this uh, this cemetery dates back to 1736, and actually, that's when the church, when the first church that was here was built. I think the ridge, the church that's there now was built in 1905. But anyway, I just want to quick give you a little bit of information about the church and where I am. And now we'll jump into the video. It's going to feel like you're jumping right into the middle of a video because some of that initial video just got deleted. I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, to the video. We'll see a number of flags on some of the tombstones up here. Those are all war veterans. And up here on the hill, they're all Civil War veterans. Pennsylvania is pretty good with uh, honoring its war veterans with these little plaques. Of course, we're in Pennsylvania, so these will all be uh, Union soldiers. They all have, they all say the Grand Army of the Republic, GAR, 1861-1865. See Joseph Hartline, born 1820 to 1890. So there's a number of these Civil War veterans up here. Quite a few of them. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five. A lot of Civil War veterans out here. And down below is where the Revolutionary War veterans will be. And it, as the years go on, the tombstones change. They have a much different look when you get down below. Oh, and there's a view of the old church. And the traffic. So here's another Civil War veteran, Adam Billman, because it has the thing for him. But this one gives a little more information about him. Of course, he died kind of young, 37. He died in 1875 though, but here he says, during during the rebellion, he served in uh, something, the 55 Pennsylvania Regiment volunteers from August 30th, 1862 to June 11th, 1865. So this one gets a little more information about when and where he served. Oh, I should say his wife died at 37. So. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time up here in the newer part, although I do enjoy Civil War history as well. Like I said, that, that, just like that previous tombstone has a little bit more history. But I do want to make it down to the uh, older part. I like the oldies. But this is history up here too. So I'll spend a little more time up here before we go down. I want to read that one that said I think there's one down there that said 1712 for when you were born. I think the oldest tombstone I've ever seen in Pennsylvania as far as when they were born was in the 1690s. Down near Douglasville, Pennsylvania, Berks County. So I might go back to that one sometime, check that out. And here's another one, Adam Strauss. Another Civil War. This one gives some information about him as well. Uh, See, served in the, hold on a second, let me try and make that out. I'm not so quite sure what that says, but the 151st Regiment, wounded, wounded at Gettysburg, July, 1863, July 1st, so the first day of battle he was wounded. That's pretty awesome. Well, not awesome that he was wounded, but the, uh, the history of it. Because if you watch my channel, you know I do a lot of Civil War videos over at Gettysburg. So it's kind of interesting to uh, link some history up here. This guy fought over at Gettysburg. I've been there quite a number of times. Like I said, you, know, they, you see the little memorials next to him, but when they actually give a little bit more information about the guy, the person who served is more interesting. Like a 
got to put this flag back up where it belongs. We'll just put it, it belongs with this, whoops, belongs with this guy right here. Another Civil War veteran. Some of these flags should be replaced, I think. But who do you have here? Jacob. I don't have a last name. Jacob Graham. 18... Born in 1846. All right, there's your flag back, Jacob. Still walking around in the uh, newer section. We're almost down to the older section. I do see some Revolutionary War veterans. The, uh, the little memorial plaque changes to a round symbol rather than a star. This one's kind of sad right here. There's a whole bunch of names. Priscilla. 56 to 61, Mary, 61 to 62, Sarah, Alice, Mary and Sarah. All only lived to be a couple years old. So this is a whole plot of just children. So we are in the older section now. The design changes of them. Here we have, looks like a, a Jacob Moyer, it looks like, born in 1778, died 1836. I'll try to read this in a moment if I can. Yeah, but here's our first Revolutionary War veteran. You can see the little plaque changes to the more round shaped one. Can't quite make out the, the name there. Looks like Reber, maybe. Johannes? Former Jacob, maybe? Maybe not. Oh, they're hard to tell. Another Revolutionary War veteran. Johannes, oh, what is that? S. Shirt? Looks like an F E R T there. Shirt? Something like that. Some stuff written down here. Oh, it's all in German, though. I know it's the people from Germany that watch these videos. There you go. Not sure if you can make that out or not. All right. Yeah, it's like I said, it's like gloomy gray day. Not pouring down rain yet, but only a matter of time out here yet. A couple of more Revolutionary War veterans out here. All the ones down here are Revolutionary War veterans. Here's one that has some newer information for it. Abraham Stout, Continental Line, Revolutionary War, 1724. So here's another man with the last name of Reber. I also want to say George, but it doesn't quite look like that. 17... 86 he was born, 1860. And it has just for his little memorial, it just says soldier, so maybe he didn't actually fight in a war, but I don't know. Don't often see this former one. Kind of bad shape there. I am gonna quick get my little speech again on you know, reading these dates and names. I know people mentioned, you know, doing the chalk rubbings and, you know, putting flour and other things on the on the, to the tombstones. But like I mentioned in my previous video, um, there's a lot of places that don't want you to do that. They specifically ask you not to. And I've come across, you know, cemeteries where you can see someone did chalk rubbings and left chalk on the tombstones and stuff. So I just, out of respect for the cemetery and the people that 
own and maintain it. I'm not going to come to these places and do that just because I guess like from what I've read online and places I've been to they, they specifically ask you not to do that. So I, I, I thank you for the the uh, mentions of doing those things to help me read these tombstones but I, out of respect for the graveyards and stuff I'm not going to do those kinds of things to these places. So, so down here are some flat markers and I think this is where I saw some really old dates because here's a Revolutionary War veteran. I don't think this is the one. Uh, to the memory of William Heister Esquire born in 1757 died in 1822. His wife is here as well. But I think this one down here had the really old date if I remember. Oh this must be the parents. Here's more Heisters. Daniel Heister, 1712, hope you can read that, it's in German though, 1742, not sure what, I think it's, it says 1795 here, so, oh this is Deutschland, so it must mean he came over, Did I, is that when he came over, or is that when he was born, it must be when he was born. I can't really read that. It's in German. But here's this must be his wife, Catherine Heister. So that's the oldest date I've seen in a while, 1712. Alright, let's see what else we can find here. In this somewhat noisy cemetery. So here's the Heister family plot, I guess. Those old ones up there were had the last name of Heister. Just a whole family plot here. Got another Revolutionary War veteran. And on the other side is a, whoops. On the other side here is a Civil War veteran. Just more Heisters. So a lot of uh, family history right here. The Heister family. Looks like another name as well. Irick, or however you say that. All right, we're kind of down near the end here. And once again, in these older cemeteries, there's more than likely a lot of people buried down here. Just didn't have tombstones back for him back then. Oh, I do see some old field stones up here. So this must be the oldest part up in here. All right, well here's one you can hardly read anything, but they do have a newer plaque place here for it. Johann Michael Stout. So there's our 1712 to 1776. First German Stout in America died May 13th and buried in this cemetery. Obviously, uh, son of Johannes and Maria Stout of Wolfers Weiler Rhineland Palatinate. Wow, that's a mouthful. He arrived at Philadelphia aboard the Pennsylvania Merchant on September 18th in 1733. A farmer and landowner at Stout's Ferry Bridge on the Schuylkill River. He and his wife Barbara had 12 children, four sons, served in the Revolutionary War and so on and so on. All right. You hear some of those really old tombstones that are just uh, field stones, although this one does have some writing on it, looks like. I think I can make out a... Hold on a second here. I think I see a 66 there. Se this says 1766. Much more cruder carving. That's kind of cool, though. I don't, know if you can, I don't know if you can make that out on the camera there. But here's some even older ones. Just old field stones. You know you're in an old cemetery when they just have the field stones. We're just up there, but there's some more oldies here. Just stones in the ground. Another one right here. And you can tell they're really old because they have the, the lichens growing on them. This gray, green, gray, crumbly stuff. Lichens, that's what it's called. It's a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae. That's what lichens are. 
There's a lot of tombstones here have that on and growing on them. Well, here's another one. It just says soldier, I think. Yeah, here's another one. It just says soldier. Looks like this is Daniel. I can't quite make that out. Well, the rain has started to pick up, so I'm gonna finish our search here soon. Well, not our search, but our little explorer. There's a few more oldies down here I wanna check out. I do have my umbrella, but we're almost done here. All right. Cool, looking back behind me, all the old, going up the hill there, all kind of spooky and gloomy up there. Yeah, check out these. We got several older ones here. More crudely carved ones. That's pretty neat though. This one says 1786 on it. it looks like it says Catherine or Katarina. 1786. Wow, I like this character to it. An old. I know all these old ones are hand carved, but this one's. You know, maybe probably carved by the people who buried her, I guess. Rather than, you know, made by professional, looks like. That's pretty neat. Yep. So here's a, a memorial to the Arbogast family. We're still in the older section, so this is obviously, you know, something newer that was made. Johannes Arbogast, born, I'm not gonna read all of it, but I'm gonna read some of it here together. Born 1703, progenitor of a large branch of the family. Uh, came to the New World on an English ship, the Edinburgh, on, in 1751. Wow. Because they said it talks about them settling in the area. 14 children. Let's see. Johannes died in 1772 and was buried in an unmarked grave in this cemetery. So probably, you see a lot of open spaces out here. There's probably a lot of unmarked graves older graves down here from that time period and the rain is really coming down as well so I do like when they have these memorials kind of giving the history of stuff because it's really hard to read you know some of the tombstones and stuff all right yeah now the rain's coming down all right we'll walk around a little bit more All right, I think I may have just found my oldest one yet here, as far as when he was born. It says, uh, oh, oh, what does it say? Westner? Born in Europe, 1710. Died in 1780, age 70 years old. Is that a girl? Does that say Rosie almost? Westner. Or is that an H? Oh boy. Actually, I can see it better through the camera. Anyway, 1710. The oldest one in here so far. I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure there's much older ones, but as far as ones we can actually read. All right, well, I'm gonna head on out of here. It is raining pretty good now. And uh, I'm still getting kind of wet. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming along with me on another little cemetery tour. Like I said, I did two of them today just because, you know, the weather is kind of nasty. Had a lot of trouble recently getting out. It's been raining a lot. And it is still deer season here in Pennsylvania, so I'm trying to stay out of the woods. So I thought we could explore some cemeteries together. Anyway, I'm going to get home, get into some drier clothes, and uh, warm up a little bit. Anyway, thanks for coming along on another little adventure. If you like these cemetery videos, you can let me know. I know some people don't care for them as much, maybe. I kind of like, I like exploring old cemeteries. All right, thanks for watching.